Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the stuff happening with the NCAA. They look like they're trying to get player prop bets canceled around the country, trying to get those banned to in respect or to protect the integrity of the sport, as well as protect the players from some crazy uh, bettors out there. But let's talk about spring games. It is that time of year, a time of year that I love a lot. I know a lot of people watch spring games and think, oh, this is ridiculous that we get nothing out of these, but it's football, and football is fun. So uh, let's talk about the Ohio State and Michigan games. It looks like those are going to be aired on Fox for the first time ever. It looks like those are the first nationally televised games. Didn't know that before that this news broke, but very cool. Uh, very excited. I think this is a very um, cool thing that they're doing that I hope a lot of other teams follow suit on, and I think um, there are a lot of people that you know don't care about spring games or don't think that they... Um, give the insight that you want and yeah you can only learn so much but at the end of the day anytime I can hear Gus Johnson and Joel Klatt calling a game a uh, college football game I'll jump at that opportunity so I'm not too upset about that it does look like Gus Johnson and uh, Joel Klatt will be on the call which you gotta love two of the best to do it in the college game today I think only behind Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreit if you were to ask me but a lot of people have different rankings some have them up, up top at number one but I think this is something that will continue to happen. I think um, it's very likely that these games get a little bit more of a viewership because the production value will be higher than it would be on you know some other smaller networks or just trying to find a way to stream it. And then you'll you'll able to have you know sideline reporters on the field talking to coaches, which is always a really really fun thing. Possibly even have a pregame show at some of these games, which will be. Uh, fun to talk about all the stuff happening around college football and some of the storylines going into this game. So I think it's really fun. I think, you know, not having to have ESPN Plus or one of these more specific uh, networks to be able to watch your team's spring game is always a good thing. Being able to get um, as many eyes in front of those games is really important to the fan bases and getting everyone excited for the next year. So I did want to as we're talking about Michigan and Ohio State and their spring games, they play on April 13th is Ohio State's, and then the following week, April 20th, is Michigan's. Those are huge days. Uh, there are tons of teams playing those days, so I figured, why don't we break down those games right now and just give you kind of storylines going in and kind of what I'm most excited for, what I'm watching for as we go into these games. So let's start with Ohio State as they are the first. So April 13th at noon for Ohio State on Fox and the storylines kind of write themselves for Ohio State, don't they? Uh, Ryan Day is, in my opinion, the most pressured individual in the entire sport right now. He knows he has to deliver. Uh, he knows it is a very, very important year for them. And he's going to be under a lot of pressure. And the pressure has already started, no doubt about it. This is the first time that we're going to be able to see him in real time, uh, see him coaching the guys and see him see what his role is, uh, you know, giving up play calling duties to Chip Kelly, which is another huge talking point going into this season. But it'll be interesting to see what role he takes on, where he kind of fits into the puzzle. Is he kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, is he kind of the overarching head coach GM type uh, guy that a lot of people have wanted him to be? Is he still a little bit more involved in the offensive side of the ball? Um, then the defensive, it'll be interesting to see all that. But also, the big uh, talking point going into this, and possibly a huge talking point coming out of it, depending on how it goes, is the quarterback battle. Uh, Will Howard against Devin Brown. Right now, I give Will Howard um, definitely the edge there. I think he's someone that is incredible, honestly. I think he's getting uh, a little bit disrespected by uh, some people out there when they talk about Ohio State this year. I think he's someone that can execute an offense really, really well. His running ability will keep defenses honest, and he's very accurate, which is really all you needed from Kyle McCord a year ago. He just wasn't quite able to do it with the consistency that they needed. So um, Will Howard, I would give the lean to right now, but Devin Brown very much in that conversation. So it'll be interesting to see who plays the better game and coming out of that game, who Ohio State fans are pegging as the starter because as we know fans like to overreact to spring games so it'll be interesting to see what happens there and then the two big transfers Quinchon Judkins and Caleb Downs getting their first runs 
as uh, Buckeyes. Obviously, Quinchon Judkins, the running back coming over from Ohio State, and Caleb Downs, the safety from Alabama. Both huge players for them this upcoming year. So it'll be interesting to see them in the scarlet and gray and see them working out for the Buckeyes for the first time and see how they feel, see how comfortable they are. Um, tons of uh, returning defensive talent. First of all, not sure how many of those guys are going to play. I think Denzel Burke will likely get a little bit of run and then find his way out of the field. Probably the same for Caleb Downs, La uh, Lathan Ransom, uh, Sam Sawyer, uh, Jack Sawyer. Oh my goodness, I couldn't remember his name. But a lot of those guys will get limited run, but you need depth. So it'll be interesting to see who steps up and who can kind of be that second line because the elite defenses that we've seen over the past couple of years aren't just good across the top 11. They're good 22 deep. They're good, you know, the, the two deep is just remarkably talented. So that will be the separator for Ohio State where the last couple of years they've had a good defense. Can they go from good to elite than uh, this year, which I think they definitely can with the names that they have in that room. But some of the things that I'm watching for, some of the things I'm most excited for is how does that first team secondary look uh, playing together? As we know, there are tons of really good names in that group as we just went through um, Denzel Burke, Latham Ransom, Caleb Downs. Uh, there's also uh, Igbenosin. There's tons of incredible players on that back end. But at the end of the day, they got to play as a team. They got to play as a cohesive, usually five. I think they'll probably do a lot of um, nickel defenses with a nickel back on the field. But at the end of the day, they have to work as a unit. They have to be able to play off of each other. So how comfortable they look in the one or two drives uh, that they do get will be very important to me. Also, who is the replacement for Cade Stover, the very talented tight end that was a huge part of that offense the last couple of years? He was someone that obviously did not get the praise that these wide receivers did because these wide receivers are remarkably talented on Ohio State, but he was a huge part of that offense. He kept everything very, very comfortable and gave a lot of those quarterbacks a failsafe that we've been talking about over the last couple of days. So a replacement there is going to be absolutely huge. They're going to get, probably need some young guy to step up. I know they got a transfer from, I believe, Ohio. I cannot remember his name uh, as of right this second, but uh, someone's got to step up into that role. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they have a clear tight end one or they're still kind of rotating guys in. And then finally, does Will Howard have a go-to guy? I talked about earlier, I think Will Howard will end up being the guy. Obviously, that can change, but at the end of the day, does Will Howard have a guy that it looks really comfortable when he thro when he's throwing to him? I think Emeka Ibuka is the number one wide receiver right now, but there's tons of other guys in that room. Brandon Ennis is one of them, Carnell Tate another, that could absolutely be the wide, re wide receiver one, and if Will Howard is just more comfortable throwing to them, it could uh, make way for that. So I'll definitely be watching to see if he has a guy and if he looks really comfortable throwing to one guy in particular among the others. But let's get into Michigan real quick. They play April 20th at the same time, noon, and uh, they'll obviously be on Fox as well. And the storyline's really a three-way quarterback battle in this one. Um, I think a lot of people, including myself, have Alex Orgy as kind of the betting favorite uh, if there were odds on this I'm sure there isn't but um, I think the big question here is who shines throwing the ball we know that Alex Orgy is an elite athlete we know he can run the ball and do incredible things with his legs we need to find out more about his throwing ability Jack Tuttle is someone that has come in at different times throughout his career and looked shaky and had uh, some turnover trouble Jane Davis is a young kid that's coming in and It'll be really interesting to see how all of these guys handle it. I think they all have a shot to start week one, and it'll be really interesting to see how this game. Mm, excuse me. I, it'll be interesting to see how this game kind of affects that because someone like Jaden Davis, this is the first time he's getting a chance to get real time reps in and real uh, game reps. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles all that. I tend to think he's the most talented guy in the room, but is also the youngest, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle all of that. Also, how does everyone else in the secondary not named Will Johnson look? Uh, they have a ton of guys walking out the door. Uh, they have a couple of different guys that have transferred. Uh, Rod Moore just got injured a couple of days ago towards ACL, so they're going to need other guys to step up. They're going to need tons of uh, second-line guys to step up into starting roles, 
And we know about Will Johnson. He's going to be good. I'm not worried about him, but they're going to need others if this uh, pass defense is going to be as formidable as it has been in the past and especially last year. But um, And then finally, Sharon Moore starts his head coaching era. Uh, he was obviously the acting head coach for the back end of last season, but there have been a ton of staff changes. He is now the guy 365 days a year. I'm very interested to see, kind of like Ryan Day, what role he takes uh, during the spring game. Is he more involved on the offensive side of the ball like he was obviously being the OC and the off offensive line coach? Or with all of the changes, does he take on kind of that Jim Harbaugh uh, style of things where he is kind of the GM uh, dealing with every side of the ball and helping out where he's needed and mainly just building relationships with guys and uh, sending messages and, you know, being the emotional leader of the group. But what I'm most excited for and what I'm really watching – very closely in this game is one who emerges as a top wide receiver next to Tyler Morris. I think Tyler Morris is going to be the guy. I think he's going to be the most important offensive player for them, to be totally honest. They need a wide receiver to go to. Obviously, Roman Wilson and Cornelius Johnson walking out the door is huge. I think Tyler Morris is ready to step up into that role, but you need more than one guy. So Tyler Morris is going to be huge, and you need someone to step up right next to him. And there are a number of guys that can do that, but I think someone at the very least will show their ability in this game, and that'll be huge to watch. Uh, and then the lines of scrimmage. All offensive linemen lost, essentially. Uh, tons of D linemen lost. Mason Graham, we know. I think he's going to be incredible this year. They need others to step up on that D line, and then obviously on that offensive line, Tons of guys going out the door. You're going to need a ton of reinforcements. And depending on how they look in this game, if there's a ton of free rushes at the quarterback, which obviously you can't hit the quarterback in these games, so they'll be bypassing him. But you'll be able to see it if this offensive line is struggling early. So that'll be an interesting thing to watch. And then finally, what I think might be the most important thing for uh, Michigan this year is who are the leaders? Who are the guys that are setting the energy, setting the pace for the practice, for the game? And uh, who's kind of getting into other guys? Because as we know with Michigan, throughout the Jim Harbaugh era at least, uh, leadership and all of those things were so important. And they were a huge part of their success. And adding more guys into that mix where they haven't been in those roles. Uh, a lot of guys are moving on that were the heartbeat of this team and you need more guys to step up into those positions so it'll be interesting to see who kind of is leading things uh, whether that's Alex Orgy stepping into that uh, quarterback one role with a lot of confidence or someone on the defensive side of the ball um, whether it's Mason Graham uh, Jay Sean Barham coming over from Maryland is another guy that's very interesting but just in general they're going to need a ton of leadership uh, because they're replacing a ton of leadership so it'll be interesting to see who in that game kind of stands out from that standpoint. But we're going to take our second break here. And when we come back, we have a little bit of a different segment for you today. We're going to talk about slogans for the 2024 contenders. I have six teams for you today, but we will definitely make this a series where we'll go down everyone that has a shot to make the playoff and give them kind of a saying to go back to uh, throughout this offseason and into the season. So stick around and we will be right back with that. <laughs> 